What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where I'm going to cover the map methods in Laravel. I personally find the map method one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful collection method that Laravel has to offer. It is great for transforming collections of data. It allows you to take an array or a collection of data and apply a function or method to each item, returning a new collection with the transformed data. I have created a simple collection right here with a key value pair of name and position. So let's define a new variable right below of it, named mapped, and let's set it equal to the player's collection, and let's chain the map method. The map method accepts a callback function as its argument. So let's pass it in. And the callback function is used to transform the data in the collection. The callback function does accept one argument, which represents each item in the collection that's being transformed. So we're going to use our player's collection, but every single item, represents one single player. Now let's see what we can do with one player. So let's return the player and let's add the, let's say name. Once we perform our request, you'll see that it has returned a new collection where it has only added the name of our three players. Now let's see if we can add a new key value pair right here, which will apply for all players. And it's actually very simple. Since one player is equal to the player variable, we can create a new key value pair by using our player, adding a set of brackets and defining a new key of team. Now let me actually align it a little bit. All right. And let's set it equal to PSG. And let's then remove the name inside our return statement, perform our request where you will see that each element inside our collection has a new key value pair of team, which has a value of PSG. Now let's create one more example, but I want to define a relationship this time. So let's navigate back to PHPStorm. Let's open the article model and right below my fillable property, I'm going to define a new public function user because one article belongs to one user where I'm simply going to return this belongs to and it belongs to the user class. And let's type in it to a belongs to. Now let's quickly open the user model because we need to define the inverse relationship as well. We're going to define a public function articles since one user can have many articles, but we're going to return this has many and it has many articles. Now let's type in it to a has many. All right. Now let's navigate back to Tinkerwell for a moment and let's get rid of our mapped variable. And let's define a new variable named articles and let's set it equal to the article model. And we're going to retrieve all rows from the articles table, but we're going to add the data from the user to it. So let's say colon colon with, and then the get method. Inside the with method, we're going to pass in the relationship that we just defined, which is user. Once we perform our request, you will see that we have loaded all the data from the articles table. But if we scroll down to the bottom right here, you will see that we have also loaded all data from the users table. So let's see how we could map this with only the data that we need. Let's go right after the get method and let's chain the map method. All right, let's align it on the line below. Then inside the map method, we're gonna define a callback function where every single article will be set equal to one single article. Then inside our map function, we're going to return an array with the data that we need. So let's say return a set of brackets where we're going to define a new key of ID, which will be set equal to the article ID. The title will be article title. Let's also add the created underscore at, which will be set equal to article created underscore at. Now let's add the format method to it, where the format will be M forward slash D forward slash capital Y. Then on the line below, we're going to add user data. So let's say that we want to add a new key of user underscore name, which will be equal to our article, the user method that we have defined, and we want to get the name. Now let's get the email as well. So let's say user underscore email is equal to article user email. Once we perform our request, now let me actually make the sidebar a little bit bigger. You will see that we have retrieved data from the database, but we have mapped it in a way better way. We have only set the ID, title, created underscore at, the username, 
and the user email inside one single element.